Subscribe our channel and press bell icon to get the notification of new video. Like this video. Join our WhatsApp group to get daily latest updates. It's totally free. Part 1 You will hear a conversation between Aneta and Charlotte, first-year university students, and Bill, who works for the Student Union Employment Service. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Hi Bill, this is my friend Charlotte. She's doing first year science too. Pleased to meet you Charlotte. Annetta told me you want some part time work. Now, I just have to complete your details on the computer. Um, what's your surname? Johnston. With an E? Yes, J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N-E. I know that you live in the Heathfield Street student residence, but I can't remember the street number there. It's 126. 126. Good. And the phone number? Well, actually, I never give people that number because sometimes nobody answers or they forget to pass on the messages. So, I bought a mobile phone yesterday, but I can't remember the number. I think it's 0414... Eight four seven seven four eight. I'll just check. No, sorry, not seven four eight. It's seven four nine. O oh, four one four eight four seven seven four nine. Yes, that's right. I must try and remember it. And what sort of work are you looking for? Well. Anything really, I suppose, though it depends when it is. I'd rather work during the day, if that's possible. How many hours a week were you thinking of? Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe about ten. But I need to keep at least two days a week free for study. Do you have any work experience? Not much, though I used to help in my uncle's shop when I was at school. OK. Well... I'll put it in, but we don't usually get shop work. What about gardening? I'd rather not. Everything I touch dies. What other kinds of work are there? Well, there's a, a lot of demand for house cleaning, fast food preparation and kitchen work and pizza delivery if you've held a driving licence for 12 months. I'm not sure. Can I have a look at the vacancies while you talk to Annetta? Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Bill, I'd like to change my job. You're at the Hamburger Express on the High Street, aren't you? What's the problem? Well, I never know what hours I'm going to work. I start at 7pm and I'm supposed to finish at 11pm, but sometimes they keep me until 2 or 3am. Yes, that is a bit late if you have to make a 9am lecture the next day. And the other thing is the pay. They're supposed to pay me on Thursdays. But they never pay me on the correct day, often not until Friday or Saturday. A few weeks ago, I had to wait until Sunday. They said their son was sick, so they couldn't get to the bank. 
but they're always making excuses. Yes, that doesn't sound too good. Would you be interested in pizza delivery? You need to have a driving license. Yes, I've got a license, but I think I'd like to change from working in the evening. Are there any day jobs available? Well, as I told Charlotte, there are several cleaning and gardening vacancies.、Uh, and this childcare job that just came in this morning. Do you like children? Yes, I do actually. What's the job? Let's have a look. Collect the boy aged four from kindergarten at three p.m. Pick up the other two girls who are aged six and nine from the primary school at three fifteen. You take them home and look after them. The parents will be home by seven. That sounds quite good. What about the pay? It's the same as you're earning now: four hours a day, Monday to Friday, so twenty hours a week. You need to contact Mrs.、Uh, Alicia Thompson. Her phone number is nine one zero four five six two nine, and she lives in Springfield. I've never been to Springfield. I hope I don't get lost. Don't worry. It sounds quite straightforward. Let's have a look at the street directory. The Thompsons live here in Tulip Street. Number two fifty two. So you catch the six three one bus, get off here next to the post office in Daisy Terrace, walk past the post office to the corner, and on the opposite corner is the kindergarten. Then walk down Daffodil Place and cross over to the primary school. Then keep going down Daffodil Place to the corner. And turn right into Tulip Street. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a talk by a tour guide. First, you will have some time to look at questions eleven to seventeen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to seventeen. Welcome to San Fernando City Tours. I'm Mark, your tour guide. We have a lot to see in three hours, so make sure you're comfortable. We'll be traveling into the historical district first, and then into the town center. After that, it's out to the harbor, and we'll finish up at the lighthouse just past the harbor. That will take us up to midday, and after that. You're free to do what you want. At the lighthouse, you'll have a chance to visit the tea room and take photographs of the magnificent coastline. Now, as we have only three hours, we won't be able to take you around the shopping district, but we think you'd prefer to look around the shops there in your own time anyway. San Fernando has some well-known tourist attractions, the lighthouse, for example, and the National Library. However, The little-known military museum is not to be missed. Be sure to visit before you leave. Now, there's a lot to do in San Fernando. Indeed, there really is something for everyone. For those who love the water, I can recommend a trip on the Seafarer, one of the most famous boats on the San Fernando River. It does an evening trip with a three-course meal included. It's great fun for everyone, but especially for young people in their teens or twenties. After nine, there's a disco on the boat, and it gets really lively. Then there's a climbing wall near the town center. It's incredibly popular, with a large wall for expert climbers and a smaller wall for novices. There's a junior wall and a creche, so it's a great day out for those of you with kids. And if you like walking, 
there's some great walking tours. The city sites tour is highly recommended, as is the walking tour by the coast. But that one's only for the fit, not really suitable for children or the elderly. For more mature people, or those less able to get around, I would suggest a tour around the vineyards. It can be done in the luxury of a coach, and it's a wonderful way to explore the region's wines. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. Naturally, there's a charge for all these attractions, but you can get 15% off if you have an Explorer Pass. If you don't have a pass but would like one, the driver here has application forms. Just ask him for one and fill it out while on the tour. Then you hand it into the tour office. Normally, it costs $10. But this year, it's just $7. When you hand it in, you'll get your picture taken for the card on the spot, and then your card is ready to use. Remember to show it whenever you pay for anything. The discounts apply not just to tourist attractions, but some bars and restaurants. Basically, everywhere you see a red Explorer symbol. Ah, we're coming up to the historical district now. If you'd like to look at That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between a science tutor and two first-year students who are being given some practical tips for conducting experiments. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Now, Vincent and Tessa, I've asked the two of you to come and see me because I'm a bit concerned after that incident in the science lab last week. I realise that neither of you have had much experience in a laboratory before? Well, we mostly just studied theory at high school. And we rarely got the opportunity to carry out any experiments. Fair enough. But we must all abide by certain safety procedures. The last thing we want is for one of our students to get hurt. We understand that. Our priority is to make sure that the chemistry laboratory is a safe place. And actually, accidents can easily be prevented if you just think about what you're doing at all times. It sounds simple enough. It is if you always use good judgment, observe safety rules, and follow directions. We've read the rules on the poster inside the lab. And yet last week you were seen working in the lab without eye protection. What do you mean? I was wearing my glasses. Prescription glasses are not safety glasses. You must always wear the goggles provided. You'll find they fit quite comfortably over your ordinary glasses. Oh, I see. Just make a habit of putting them on before you start and keep them on until you are finished. And another thing, never eat or drink while in the laboratory. What? Not even water? 
not even water, at least not until after clean-up. Then be sure to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and hot water and dry them on a clean towel first. And Tessa, your hair should be tied back when you're in the lab. It's not that long. Still, it poses a hazard when you're working with chemicals or a naked flame. If you can't tie it back or pin it up, see if you can tuck it into a cap or something. Yes, I can do that. Thank you. Now, Vincent, last week you wore a t-shirt and trainers in the lab. The rules clearly state that long-sleeved shirts and leather shoes must be worn. Oh, yes, I remember. I was late getting back from sports practice and I didn't have time to change. Well, it mustn't happen again. OK, I'll see that it doesn't. Good. As for the rest of the safety precautions, refer to the safety poster inside the lab and you shouldn't have any problems. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Now, before you go, a word about record keeping. Oh, good. I was going to ask you about that. What's the best way to keep track of what we're doing in the lab? Well, obviously, all your observations should be written down. I know you think you won't forget stuff and you'll be able to recall it later, but generally this turns out not to be the case. Written data, however, are a permanent record, and you must be thorough. Organise and record everything in a bound notebook. I use a spiral notebook. And I use a large notepad. That won't do. A book with binding ensures the pages are not easily removed or lost. Oh, and be sure to write your entries in complete sentences. Isn't that a waste of time? Surely notes are good enough. You might think so. But brief notes can be hard to decipher at a later date, whereas with full sentences, you are less likely to misinterpret data. I make sketches, you know, simple drawings. That's a good idea, Vincent, but be sure to date them. You want us to write the date next to each drawing? Yes. Every sketch and every entry must be dated. What about headings? Use the title of the experiment as your first entry. When you have completed your observation entries, answer any questions that have been posed, and then, finally, write your conclusion. How do we write a conclusion? Do we need to repeat things like the questions and our findings, or the time it all took? Just write your own ideas or feelings about the experiment as the conclusion. Oh, and remember to sign it. Well, that's all I have time for today. If you have any questions, ask the lab assistant or come back to me. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a student union representative presenting the views of college students about the design of a new building. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. We're very grateful that the committee has agreed that a representative for the Students' Union can present students' suggestions about the design for the proposed new union building. Uh, we appreciate that some of our ideas may not be feasible in the circumstances, uh, but we do feel that it is important that the ultimate beneficiaries of the facilities should have some say in its design. <clears throat> if I could start by briefly explaining what steps were taken to find out student opinion and how we have arrived at conclusions. Uh, firstly, a meeting was held in the current union for our SU committee to explain the options. Then we invited all students to submit written suggestions for the design, placing cards in a suggestion box. These suggestions then provided the basis for the design of a questionnaire which was completed by approximately 2,000 of the college students over a period of three weeks. Uh, finally, the SU committee collated the results and drew up a report. If I can just hand around a copy of that report. Uh, this presentation is essentially a summary and discussion of the key points of this report. So, in broad terms, the consensus was as follows. Firstly, regarding the crucial matter of the site, we presented the three options that you have proposed. One, in the city center near the Faculty of Education, two, on the outskirts of the city near the park, and three, out of town near the halls of residence. We asked students to cite reasons for and against these sites, and, uh, and there was remarkable agreement on all three. Uh, site one was unpopular because of traffic and parking problems. Site 2 had a number of supporters, mainly because it was close to most lecture rooms, and Site 3, out of town near the halls of residence, was clearly the most popular because of access from living quarters. It was clear that the union was mainly to be used after lectures. It was also felt that the larger site would allow more room for a choice of facilities. Do you have some time to look at questions? Our second area of interest was obviously the facilities. There was minimal interest in having a library on the premises, but one option seemed to be a reading room instead, more useful. We would like the current table games room to be replaced with a small gym, and if possible, a small swimming pool. Uh, not, of course, Olympic-sized. There was a large number of respondents in favor of a travel agents and insurance center. We also request that there be the offices of the Student Counseling Center moving this from the refectory. There was, however, much disagreement about whether to build a drama theater. Just over 40% of the respondents were in favor, but a largish minority were strongly against it, claiming that it is elitist and a waste of funds. Essentially, the jury is out on that. Finally, given the number of unfortunate incidents in the current union over the past few months, a strong point was repeatedly made about security. The recommendations would be at least video surveillance and security personnel who would check student union cards on request. We doubt if it would be feasible to have a check at reception of all people coming in. Well, uh, this is the summary of the views of the student population. As I say, fuller details are given in our report, but I'm happy to take any questions if you have them. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.